Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Whiskey Talk. I'm Josh. And I'm Christine. And today our guest is... Oh, hi, I'm Shoshana Green. Yeah, and today we're going to be drinking Maker's Mark 46. And uh, we're going to be discussing what is your favorite evolutionary link? What does that mean? Stay tuned and find out mm-hmm. more. Yeah, so mm. let's start off with our favorite, Shots of Jameson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Jameson. Mm. You know, guys, I learned a new cheers. Oh, that was delicious. It's uh, Kuktha in Mongolian. It means death to our enemies. What? Ooh, yeah. that's and, a good one. And that is how they cheers in Mongolia. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to have to look it up now. Because somebody told it to me last night, and now it's like, not on Google. Oh, maybe it's not true. Maybe it means, like, stupid white person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... So cheers, guys. Um, hey. So yeah, now that we've done our shots of Jameson, let's move on to our bourbon tonight. And I specifically picked this bourbon uh, because I'm still trying to sell Christine on bourbon. Um, so this is Maker's Mark 46. But, so you're trying to sell her on bourbon. I, hi, this is Shoshana. I love <laughs> bourbon, but I do not like Maker's Mark. Mm-hmm. So this might be like, you may have a... a a first-time bourbon lover and someone who doesn't love the bourbon, who normally <laughs> well, does. As he on hands the show. you a glass of. Bourbon. Oh, I'm still gonna try it <laughs> yeah. because I don't like Maker's Mark, but I've never tried Maker's oh, 46. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Christine once upon a time said that she likes sherry cask aged uh, spirits. I do. I do. Um, so Maker's 46 um, is aged is finished in sherry casks and finished with oak staves. Um, so it's a little bit extra oak. And a little bit, little touch of sherry, so maybe you'll like it. I don't know. We'll see. Cool. Yeah. So what are we, what are we smelling? Oh. I can smell the cherry. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Sherry. Oh, did I say cherry? Yeah. No, I thought you said sherry. Sherry. I can, I can touch the sherry. (laughs) Maybe my ears are terrible. I don't know. Hmm. So it definitely tastes more woody to me than a lot of the bourbons I've had. So, I mean, right away, it's like it's a little bit darker than regular Maker's Mark. And I actually mm. put some um, regular Maker's Mark on the table as well so we can sort of compare and contrast. Ugh. Don't worry, I'll keep this away from you, Shush. Right. <laughs> Although compare and contrast isn't a bad idea. Nope, this is not for me. Not for you? Tastes too much like Maker's Mark. <laughs> okay, well, whoever doesn't yeah. like their Maker's 46 can pour it into my glass. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about Makers. It's got a... Ooh, I might know. Yeah. I, I might actually know. Yeah, why 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 would I like other bourbons and not Makers Mark? So there's a couple of things that set Makers Mark apart. Um, so it's a sour mash bourbon, but also one of the things I recently learned is that Makers Mark has a higher wheat mash on the bill. So there's a little bit more wheat in there compared to other bourbons. Maybe that's it. Yeah. But, I mean, again, we're all sort of trying to figure that out, right? It's like, I'm not sure. For me, it tastes like Southern Comfort. Hmm. It's got that going on mm, for it. Southern comfort tastes like regret to me. Yeah, and that's what Maker's <laughs> Mark tastes like. How about how about an honest opinion there, Christine? What do you think? Have you tried it yet? No. Yeah. I just I keep smelling Ugh. it and then moving no. it away. I'm not I'm not a fan. And then I'm gonna smelling pour it, in it your glass. <sighs> and then moving it Sorry. away. Sorry. No, you should try it because you're a Scotch fan, right? Yeah. You but, m- uh, you might like this bourbon. if you're a Scotch fan. No, 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 no. Uh, Try it with a pretend it's a okay. scotch. All right, hand me that water first. Okay. So I can be prepared. <laughs> just pretend. Just pretend it's a, pretend it's a, um, pretend it's a scotch. I'm just going to end up drinking four shots of Maker's 46 myself. Yeah, I myself. think this is definitely where this is going. Finished in sherry. Delicious, right? 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 Oh, she knows she's got her thing. Oh, she's taking a second sip. Mm. She's got her thinking face on. You may have changed her life. I mean, I did find... Well, there's the quest for great bourbons is is, mm. is yeah. a long yeah, one. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. Wow. You like it? Yeah, I do. Wow. Yes! Permit me to do a, a, a dance. A victory oh, dance. Oh, here he goes. He oh, is. wow. He oh, is. he's going for it. Oh, my um, God. Everything is shaking. The, the live audience is going crazy, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could be here right now. <laughs> All right, so since Shosh does not enjoy it, we'll get her some of her uh, her favorite bourbon. But no, well, oh. I mean, sort of. I do love ch- cheap bourbons. Yeah. I am a big fan we'll get, of we'll cheap Get you some trash bourbon, uh-huh. That's which good. is uh, specifically Heaven Hill. Yeah, um, which actually I really like to mix. It, it it's a great it's a it's a bourbon you don't feel bad about mixing. <laughs> you know, that's true. Or you can drink it straight if you it, want. It is. I really I really like mm. it. We also do still still have some Yamazaki over there, which you're welcome to as well. But as far as like sipping, sipping like on one of own. one of my favorite my go to bar drink is like cheap bourbon and club soda because then okay. you get like 
a bourbon flavored soda and it's pretty great <laughs> but like maker's mark is terrible in that drink and i don't like it straight okay or on the rocks but in manhattan i could see how the cherry flavor would really really work with that and mm-hmm. make and make a pretty decent okay. manhattan cool. So uh, one, of, one of the cool new facts I learned about bourbon, and you guys might be interested in this, is that um, a lot of bourbons, uh, they had, there was a massive um, whiskey warehouse in Indiana, right? And a lot of bourbons start by be- getting their like stock from this big whiskey warehouse, and then they finish it however they want to at their distillery. Sounds like cheating. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Awful lot like cheating. Right, and, and I recently learned this, but like, uh, and as long as it's like bottled in Kentucky, then it's then it's still bourbon. Whoa. Yeah. It, well, I mean, it can be bottled anywhere in the U.S. Mm, right. But they make it in vast quantities, and they have all different like varieties that people can use as their base for whiskey. Right. So they'll, there's one that's like heavier in corn mash, and there's one that's heavier in rye mash, and there's one that's aged this way, and there's one that's aged that way. Like basically every type of mash bill you can possibly get, which is like talking about like which grains go into fermenting the whiskey. Um, as long as it's over 51% corn, the other 49% can be whatever you want, mm. right? So that's where you get a lot of differences in flavor in your bourbon. So, you know, depending on how it was finished, right, in addition to what mash bill it is, because the other 49% you can play with, right? So this big warehouse out in Indiana is the base for a lot of your whiskeys, right? That was kind of a cool fact, and it kind of blew my mind, you know? I feel like that's, I don't know, I feel like that's like buying a... A painting and then putting your own stuff on it and then saying it's like a look paint what by, i made it's like a paint by another numbers yeah like doing a paint of. by numbers and being like i did this <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's it's interesting i'll have to look into more of the details um but really you know what to, to save it um the other thing we've recently been learning and christine you can follow along with this because you've recently learned it as well is that a lot of the craft really comes in the finishing like yeah, a lot the, of it's in the aging itself. Yeah. yeah, so you can really get any sort of base for your whiskey, and the the mastery comes in in choosing the casks and storing it right and tasting it at the right time and pulling it from the cask at the right time and all of that stuff. Um, so the artist, that's really where the artistry comes in. So even though you have this sort of base, you know, warehouse, you still have, you know, like some some sort of craftsmanship that goes into it, you know. Hmm. It's really kind of cool. That really surprised me to learn. So I thought I would share it with the listeners there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really interesting. Yeah, um, yeah so um, so you really like, you, you like bourbon? You like Heaven Hill? That's like your, your well, favorite cheap? No, no, it's like my go-to cheap, uh, of, the, of the cheap bourbons. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so here's the story. So <laughs> I you, feel like this is Shoshi's I need to get drunk and here's some bourbon that I'm going to pick. Uh, no, actually, it's more, way more involved than that. Yeah. So you know of Quig's Pub. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know if you discussed Quig on the podcast. <laughs> I have before. not yet. No. It's like the actor speakeasy in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. It's it's above Plays and Players Theater. It's, it's been magic. around. Yeah. It, it is. Well, they call it what the Quig Sand. Yes. Like you you go in at midnight and you think you're there for one drink and all of a sudden it's 4 a.m. and you've, mar- <laughs> you've married someone. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. oh my God, it's and, crazy. And the neighbors are screaming at you because it's like this beautiful residential neighborhood. <laughs> that it, with a theater and they're like, be quiet, you're young and get off my alleyway. Yeah, my sidewalk. <laughs> um, so we were there one night and there weren't that many people there. And I think, uh, who mm. was it? It was uh, Keith was bartending. Mm. Um, and he's like, ah, there's no one here. Um, you know what? Let's have a blind whiskey tasting. Like what? Oh no. I think Mady was there too. Was it Mady? Cause it was that long ago. So we, we did a blind whiskey, uh, whiskey and bourbon tasting. So the bartender, um, you know, numbered the shots. He knew what, what was in them. We didn't know. And then we like wrote down what we, a, what we thought they were and B, whether we liked it or not. That's where I found out I didn't like Maker's Mark because okay. I had never had it straight up before. It was always in a mixed drink. Um, that, and that's where I discovered that out of Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, and Evan Walker. Johnny and Walker? Have, uh, no, uh, uh, Evan, Evan. No. Williams? Evan Williams. Evan Williams. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Evan Williams and Heaven Hill. I chose Heaven Hill as my favorite one. <laughs> and I was like. I had no idea. <laughs> like, it's great. Yeah. And I also, um, I like Jim Beam better than Jack Daniels, which okay. surprised me too. Mm. I didn't know that either. So it was a, it was a cool experiment to do yeah. that blind that blind yeah. tasting. And that's always a fun time, right? Yeah. So when you get into stuff like Jim, like that's, 
I mean, they've been around for 200 years. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? So though it is kind of mass-produced... It's still pretty, it's pretty good whiskey. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then we did... we did uh, So that was our bottom shelf. And then we compared top shelves. And that's where I found out I didn't like Maker's Mark. Mm. And I, I think Jameson ended up being my favorite mm. top shelf. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. The bottle of Jameson is still within reach. Uh, yeah. If you decide you no longer like 46. So you like this 46. Is it still growing on you? Do you enjoy it? Uh... Uh, we'll see as I go. You know, it's it's like sometimes I initially like something and then I get about halfway and I'm like, no. So check in with me <laughs> when like we hit our philosophy section. Like around <laughs> there, I should know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, and I just took one sip of this Heaven Hill you poured me and I was like, oh my God, that's so much better. <laughs> like just that, I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Well, you'll okay. certainly save a lot of money. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, drinking $10 bottles of oh, Heaven Oh, it is Hill. also like value. Yeah. Va- for ta- Like it is good <laughs> yeah. value. Yeah. It is good value. It's like dollar, yeah. Um, I think it is really interesting like that you... You were like, drink this like it's a scotch. Pretend it's scotch. Because that, I think that. Oh, did that do it? It kind of, you you Mm. kind of flipped the switch there. And And I was like. Yeah, so where where did your dislike of bourbon come from? Oh, I don't know. I just. Oh, you just, you tried it and you knew you didn't like it. Yeah, like I generally never enjoy bourbon and I almost always enjoy uh, expensive scotch. <laughs> right, and see, that's a dangerous slope to go down because then you have this, um, like, is it the cost? Is it the knowledge that it is better that's influencing your taste or is it your actual taste? Like, that's the danger. No, because I've visited with people that have scotch collections in, like, decanters, mm-hmm. not, like, in the bottle. So it would be like, here, try this and have it poured for me and drink it and not know what it is. Okay. And then they're like, oh, okay. yeah, that's 16-year blah, 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 or 25-year yeah. such and such, yeah. you know? Mm. so And that is one of the reasons you're seeing a lot of Scotch distillers come out with no-age statement whiskeys these days, right? Oh. Because they want you to actually taste the product rather than have a preconceived notion of how good it is, right? So rather than see, see 18 years and know there's a certain amount of luxury that comes with that, you just have to taste what they've engineered as a great whiskey. You know what I mean? Huh. Like, it's a really cool concept that they're doing. Oh, and Shosh, the other thing is uh, bourbon actually has a higher alcohol content. Oh, so maybe yeah. that, like... so it's a little bit punchier, mm. you know? So I think I generally... Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, so... And uh, Maker's 46 is 94 proof. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so it's a good 14 proof higher than Jameson. Yeah, and Heaven Hill's only 80. Yeah. I guess maybe I just don't like very alcoholic liquors. Maybe, maybe. that's And my that's thing. what I think is Yeah, my and you thing like the well. more alcoholic. No, but I, less cuz oh. like scotch is less <gasps> alcoholic than bourbon. Oh, gotcha, Generally. gotcha, gotcha. Generally, Generally yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, bourbon's very like, Ur, we're America, punch you in the face. I just imagine like, like forties like boxers when the navy like when they used to like box each other on the ship. That's so they, what bourbon is. That's that's exactly what I imagine. You no, know, I picture I picture like a like um like a like one of those like a Civil War mustache into the beard look oh, looking nice. guy. So like almost the Jim Beam guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then I just picture him with a cowboy hat being on be, being like, that's right, drink the bourbon. <laughs> That's right. We got it. Got the rock gut. Yep, feels good in your tum tum, don't it? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So those are the, those are the few things I've learned about bourbon since last episode. Mm. Um. So show. Do you give it like on whiskey talk? We have the designated thumbs up, thumbs down, or the wiggly thumb. Oh, for the forty six. Yeah. I uh, thumbs down. <laughs> uh, it's not for me. Mm, uh, Christine. A strong. Wiggle thumb. I don't know if you can strong, give a strong. Strong in an upward or a downward direction? Strong in a very middle. <laughs> but I thought you liked it. I I liked it and then I drank more of it and then I never finished it. Are you still thinking about it as scotch though? So like it's grown on you but not in a good way. Uh... Like a bad ivy. This will take further research. (laughs) Yes. I give it a thumbs up. I mean, this is not to say I don't like bourbon. I really like bourbon. I just don't like Maker's Mark. So, everybody, comment and tell us how you feel about Maker's Mark. 
and maybe we can come to some kind of group decision here. <laughs> you can end up a strong wiggly figure. <laughs> wiggle there... thumb shows. How... Oh, right. God, sorry. get it sorry, right. Sorry, my brain's in a different wiggle place. Wiggle finger's just something weird you do to somebody during sexy times, and then they don't like it. Just a wiggle. strong wiggly finger. Hey, baby. <laughs> Let me give you the strong wiggly finger. That's... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to go now. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to turn, turn this off now. So, today's philosophy question is, what is your favorite evolutionary link? So, basically, what we're asking is, what is your favorite this thing evolved into this thing combo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, like, like top hats became um, fedoras or, like, Oh, animals? could be, yeah, that could be, like, like corsets turning into bras. I much prefer bras. <laughs> um, I think I was thinking kingdom. more animals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have any thoughts, guys? I mean, I know mine right away. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That, like the dinosaurs are birds. Well, like one hundred percent. Like I thought prove, it was awesome. Prove prove they're not birds. <laughs> you can't. You can't do it. Well, can you can you prove they are birds? Yes, very easily. <laughs> but I remember I remember when I was a kid. I was maybe like 10 or 11, and every like 10 or 11 year old is obsessed with dinosaurs. Yes. And I remember like looking mm -hmm. at the fossils and studying all the things and like them talking about the bone structure. And I was like, they're birds. It's like, why has no one said they're birds? They're clearly, guys, they're clearly birds. <laughs> what? Hello? Is anyone, what's going on? Is anyone, why isn't anyone listening to me? So she said it first. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I didn't. Like, there were definitely other people I, saying I it. Theorists, like, but in like, Jurassic Park, for example. Right. There was a lot Although of Although Jurassic Park came out after. After, well, I, they definitely yeah. heard about your I theory. just remember, yeah. like, when they decided that a lot of dinosaurs probably had feathers. Uh-huh. And it just blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, what? But I remember being frustrated because... Like, they knew about the feathers beforehand, mm. like, and still no one was talking about it. And I remember thinking, like, okay, I'm 11. I'm not that smart. Like, <laughs> why, why has no one else? And I remember bringing mm. it up in one of my classes, in, like, my science class, and everyone being like, you're an idiot. Like, Aww. there is no way. You were the Shush. Galileo of your... Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, like, of my, like, fifth of your childhood grade, My fifth grade science <laughs> class. Have, have you ever heard there's a famous story of, like, a 11-year-old girl who saved a bunch of lives because, like, they were at the beach and a tsunami was coming. <gasps> Whoa! Right? And she was like, oh, guys, when the water recedes like this, it means that a tsunami wave is coming. We need to get away. And everybody was like, what? really? Really, like people like whip out their phones and Google it real quick. They're like, "We need to get the hell off the beach." Ah, this that's chick awesome. is right. Wow. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I was Did like, a little girl get like a medal or something. Oh, I don't she know. deserves I a medal. So. That's yeah. awesome. awesome. That's freaking rad. <laughs> that's a great story. Yeah, but like, dude, believe yourself when you're like ten or eleven. I you know, know, right? Like, you, that's awesome. You got it. But I remember being frustrated, being like, "Why has no one? Why is no one saying this?" And mm. then I remember asking like science people, and they were all like, "Man," and I and 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 now that's exactly what it is. What did they say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of exactly what they did say. Mm. Um, but like a little a little while ago, an artist did this series of pictures where he uh, painted cats and cows and dogs as if we treated them the way we treat dinosaurs. So basically, the way they were sketched for so long was basically with no fat and barely any muscle. And lizard skin, which like if you do the if you find cow bones and you're like, oh, this must have been a lizard creature. <laughs> it looks it looks like a dinosaur. Like it looks really that is freaky. so interesting. Yeah, yeah. So then so then he did all these other pictures of them like with regular amounts of fat and feathers, and you're like, holy shit, they're just big parrots <laughs> that is the best thing ever like i am obsessed with that is that what you shared on facebook yes today? it makes me oh so my God. yes that's not a big bird that's literally a tyrannosaurus rex <laughs> skeleton oh my god with like okay. fat and bird outside so show shared this awesome photo <laughs> so on great. facebook today and of course we'll and share it with you guys as yeah, well yeah i'm gonna i was about to say i will totally uh reshare it on the blog and I, I just saw it and thought it was like this super cute, awesome thing. I was like, oh, look, 
it totally is proportioned like a T-Rex. But it's a big bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, then wow. Then you think about it and you're like, oh, shit. Speaking like, oh of, like, mind-blowing yeah, yeah, moments yeah. right yeah. there. Not T-Rexes. Not, not it's a cute T-Rex that looks like a bird. T-Rexes were birds. Right. And do you know how scary birds are? Birds yeah. are freaking scary. Exactly. And see, that's uh, my evidence. mean. See, that's yeah. my evidence. Look up bird attack on YouTube. Right? You're welcome. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, like, that is my biggest evidence for... Uh, that birds are were dinosaurs. Right. Because birds are fucking assholes. Yeah. Anybody who has ever had a pet bird, no matter how much you love that bird, that bird has drawn blood from you. Tell me I'm wrong, yeah. internet. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't care how much you love a bird. It will, it will, one day will just decide that your finger is delicious. And it will just, and look at their eyes. Oh, it's look death, 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 eyes. death, death, death. That's all you it okay is. there, Josh? Their they eyes are, are like, are, right? I really, their eyes look He's, at you and they're like, I really want to peck yeah. out your eyes right now and eat them like little, little grapes. Cold eyes. I feel, dead <laughs> eyes. I feel like, like I need to like, like bird, uh, hand there, you a cup of tea and give you a blanket. There is like, no, are you speaking from experience There are no birds that actually love you. And look at their feet. Their feet are just big dinosaur feet. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, but y'all, here's something that's really gonna blow your mind. So, <laughs> have ready. you have you ever wanted to eat a brontosaurus burger? Uh, you do every time you have a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <gasps> what? Oh man. <laughs> I feel like Fred Flintstone would disagree with you. Yeah, but... I don't know. You know, yeah. this reminds me of the one time I ate, I ate ostrich before, and I was sitting there eating this ostrich, and yeah. I was like, hmm, what does this taste like? This tastes kind of like like beef and chicken together. Then I was like, wait a minute. It's a cow-sized chicken. It's an ostrich. Yeah. Of course it tastes it like both like, yeah. beef and chicken at the same but time. But that's probably what a dinosaur... I mean, ostriches are like real close to what dinosaurs were like, probs. for sure. Yeah, probs. And kiwis. Oh my god, you guys. Go and Google tons of videos on kiwis. <laughs> New <laughs> Zealand bird, is showing. The right little now. bird. <laughs> in, but like, seriously, they're amazing. <laughs> they're beautiful, useless dinosaurs. They're so... <laughs> <laughs> well, they evolve, uh, they evolve with no predators. Like, I feel that's like what I've you said get. a similar thing about like people before yeah what a, what a beautiful useless person <laughs> oh i'm so mean uh. but like you know kiwis evolved with no with no predators so right. like that's what you get you get this thing oh. that just like walks really slow <laughs> and pecks the ground and like their eggs are like as large as their own body and like what yeah, yeah let's delicious. imagine for a moment that you had to carry a person in you the same size as you mm. What? Let's, yeah. Let's not imagine it's that. It's hard. Like you Google Google like pregnant kiwi and the egg <laughs> the egg is like the entire torso. It's crazy. How does it move? It doesn't much. <laughs> does it have roll? Yeah. That's why they're endangered. <laughs> no, I want well, kiwi cartoons of this. Mm, Someone well, make this a thing. I just remember reading accounts of when settlers first went to New Zealand and their dogs were like, look at this delicious giant fluffy thing that has no predators. Nom, nom, oh nom, my nom. god. They were decimated. They were ki- cat possums. Possums killed kiwis. <laughs> That's how defenseless they are. Jeez. And possums are everybody knows possums are the dumbest animals there are. Yeah. I hate possums. Yeah. But but um Their defense is to have a heart attack. Yes, their defense is they play dead. What a stupid <laughs> animal. What a terrible animal. They also are ugly as sin. Oh. So, yeah, that's right. I said it. <laughs> I said it. Also, birds are assholes. I'll say it again. This is a I'll real, say it again until like, I die. Podcast. <laughs> so, so angry. Bourbon <laughs> makes you angry, you guys. <laughs> now, I'm really curious about what you said with birds and no matter how much you love that bird and how sweet that bird is, it has drawn blood from you. Because I've known some very, very impossibly sweet birds. And now I want to, like, ask my bird friends yeah if, ask if they've them. been packed oh i'm sure they have ask them no yeah. matter how much love you give that bird it was once a dinosaur and it wants to eat your skull <laughs> i'm telling you dude i, I am know. telling you i've seen I, like, you know, I met the two most loviest birds ever and they're just so loving mm, they're just trying to trying to suck you in so they're that one so day when you fall asleep they can eat your eyes like they want you to cuddle them and when you don't cuddle them they just like brush up against you and coo until you like brush their little necks with your fingers and they like rub into your fingers See? they're like so sweet so we could have had we could have had dinosaur pets would have been fine <laughs> mm. so you're saying the new jurassic world where chris pratt was taming <gasps> raptors is totally possible uh for uh, sure no, no way dude for no sure. way well you can train a hawk yeah I think you can train birds yeah well but the hawk is also 
small compared to you. Yeah. But that hawk could still kill you. Yeah, but there are animals I mean, bigger than us that still That's respond true. to training. Yeah, like we tame lions elephants and elephants. That's yeah, true. I mean, I think so humans. It's not just size. I mean, we can we can tame anything, but I mean, dinosaurs. Like, no, we totally could. Just pretend they've got we, fluffy we, feathers. It just has could, to know who like, supplies the food. Yeah, right. But you'd have to raise it from an egg. I yeah. don't know, man. I mean, well, I mean, is, think oh, about domesticating probably, wolves. Yeah, you know, domesticating dinosaurs mm. through generations of good breeding oh and uh, listen, training. Listen, ladies, I. I, I, I I want to believe this because it's awesome. Yeah. And Chris Pratt training raptors was totally awesome. Right. But I just, uh, I nope. mean. Done. Like, like wolves, uh, wolves still are super dangerous to have as pet. Like, like I actually had um, I, a friend of mine growing up. He had dogs that had part wolf in them and they were just vicious, dude. They would mess people up. Like, he had to be very, very careful but around But that's just dogs. the training. I've, I've met half wolves yeah that, that are, are so, so sweet. sweet they just lie around yeah like they they want they do snuggles. they just like, they like, act like any other domesticated yeah. dog oh, gee, it, i don't know man. i think it's, it's <laughs> there's a lot to be said for like for domestication and like bloodlines and selecting your blood i mean if you can if you selective can, breeding if you can domesticate an ostrich you can you could domesticate a dinosaur I, mean, I think it's possible. Yeah. But I think it would be, I would not be, I would not like to be the guy who's Guys, on the front lines what? doing Have that the first time. Have you ever seen an ostrich run from the back? It's so funny. Ah. You should look that up. Okay. Or ostrich attack. There's an ostrich attack video that's great. Too. <laughs> I'm just really stuck on this bird attack, bird attack video videos. thing. They're <laughs> really funny, guys. If you haven't looked them up, you need to do it. It's, you're, It'll brighten your life. Uh, I remember there was and a, make you really scared of really, birds. <laughs> I'm already terrified of because birds. they're dinosaurs. Yes, because right. they have terrible. I will destroy you, your soul eyes. Yeah, dead eyes. But, <laughs> like dead but so what's eyes. your so what's your favorite, um, Christine? What's your yes. favorite evolutionary link? Oh, uh, okay. So I don't know about my favorite, but one that always stands out to me, again and again, whenever I think about this, is uh, what what is a panda? <laughs> <laughs> what what is a panda that's a that's a real philosophical question where, where did pandas come from like well, what is going on there okay so a good no, are they a, a good... bear are they a giant no they're like thing? they're like a raccoon right 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 so uh, the question we need to ask is what is the actual species tree like where have scientists yeah. figured out that it is that it has branched but it's off? still something that they're debating like oh. it's still something that is and argued. also like it should not be alive it is so hard to keep pandas oh alive. Oh my god, dude! I, I had a they friend... eat poison that puts them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? not only that, not only that. Did you ever see? There's a really great Australian chame- uh, comedian uh, named Jim Jeffries, and he has this fantastic bit about how we're trying to save pandas and they just won't f- each other. No, they just they want to die. <laughs> they want. They are the end. Oh, he's like, he's like, ready to go. He's like, listen, you put me in a cage with anything for a week, and I'll f- it. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty, pretty funny bit. So I'm looking up right now what is the family tree of a panda. Yeah. I have a friend who had to do a paper on this. And it, it was like a huge thing in her in her college. They had to let, you know study it and write these huge papers on it. And I remember her just like beating her head against the desk. Mm. Like going looking through like the back and forth, the arguments on both sides. And <laughs> about what a panda was. Because it looks, I I feel like it's a bear. Right, it looks like it a bear. It looks like a bear. But it looks the like size a, of a bear. It, it eats like a bear. It no, sleeps no, no, like a bear. Whoa, 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 whoa. It does not eat like a bear. No, it doesn't eat like it a bear. Eats, it only eats, eats eucalyptus. No, 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 not eucalyptus. No, bam- bamboo. No, bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. You're thinking Sorry. of koala. Koala. Which are also called which bears. also, what is a koala? Yeah, <laughs> like, right? Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no, we know what a koala is. A koala is a marsupial. Oh, well, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, um, sorry, I meant bamboo. Um, giant pandas in the wild occasionally eat other grasses, wild tubers, or even meat in the form of birds, rodents, or carrion. Whoa. I did not know that. I thought they only Eats ate bamboo. like a bear. Well, you said they 99% bamboo. Yeah. How like does, that's... What, what are your sources? Why am I on Wikipedia? This was a mistake. They probably only eat that if they're, like, starving. Yeah. Ta- taxonomy, like, class... For many decades... Okay, here we go. Yeah. For many decades, the precise taxonomic classification of the giant panda was under debate because it shares characteristics with both bears and raccoons. That's what, yeah. Molecular studies suggest the giant panda is a true bear. <gasps> bear! Whoa! Oh, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> bears. Uh, 
though it differentiated early in history from the main ursine stock. Uh. The giant panda's closest extant relative is the spectacular bear of the spectacled bear of South America. I like the spectacular bear. <laughs> it's just better than all the other bears. Mm. <laughs> the know. giant panda has been referred to as a living fossil. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a it's like a dinosaur. Off. Look at that like, yeah. crossover oh. that just happened right there. Because it's oh, like a. Man. So it's a branch off of the evolutionary tree, and that's okay. why they're dying out because they're freaking yeah, they should. outliers. Aww. Yeah, yeah, weird. But guys, we were probably outliers on the evolutionary tree, so mm. you never know that is a what'll true happen. Fact. Yeah. yeah. Um, so have have we have we reached the end of this panda question? Well, since we killed what could have been a really great debate by using the internet, <laughs> I guess we are done. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be, guys. Mm. But but that but the um that was really interesting about your friend who was studying back and forth. Well, I, I mean, no, that sounds really cool. I definitely think of I don't care what scientists say. I definitely think of pandas as more raccoon like than bear like. Mm. I don't care what scientists say. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How much trouble have Man. words like that gotten the world into? You you're against birds. You're against <laughs> possums. You hate Very- science. <laughs> Very Gosh, contrary today, you're bringing us down. <laughs> <laughs> what has bourbon done to us? Mm, well, I just think I mean, America. Well, uh, okay, America oh. is what's happened. To oh us. no, you guys! <laughs> okay, okay. At the end of this, we'll be like, no evolution. We don't believe in it. The Earth is only four thousand years is old. Fake. That's right. <laughs> Hold up, though. Let me make my case, right? So you think about a bear. What do you think of? A big, scary animal that eats That's not animals. what I think, though. Maybe that's what you yeah, think. Yeah, I think of a fuzzy animal that eats berries and hibernates in the winter. Okay, so you think pandas, pandas are... don't hibernate. That's because they don't... Well, there's... Hmm. <laughs> mm, well, okay. So I... Th- when I think But of... you also think they're raccoons, so... <laughs> well, when I think of bears, I think of carnivorous animals. But maybe that's because one of my favorite movies in my teen years was a movie called The Edge. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I was thought you were going to say the Bad News Bears. <laughs> <laughs> it's with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin, and this grizzly bear like chases them through Alaska. So, like, if you think of like grizzly bears, or like... but then at the end, the real bad guy was humans. That, that's yes, always. Spoilers. Yeah, always it always is right. But but what I think I mean, of a bear, grizzly, the grizzly is the most well. The most it's the bear-like second bear? most aggressive bear right next to polar bears right polar right. bears will run but like day. brown bears will just kind of leave you alone yeah mm. honey bears brown bears sun bears do you know sun, sun bears? bears sun bears are great yeah. <laughs> i feel like like care bears <laughs> care bears gummy bears you, you guys are so like you're so like lovey-dovey about bears like and i'm just like dude bears will destroy you oh They're yeah so... they'll fuck you up <laughs> they will ruin you if you cross them yeah but like... They're so, like, they just want to be left alone in the wild. Yeah, they I, just I want agree. to do their thing with their cubs and I, eat I some agree. food and sleep. Right. And isn't that what we all want? Yeah. <laughs> like, we just want to sleep and not have anybody touch yeah. our stuff. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's a great point, Christine. I just want to eat and sleep and have no one touch my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like... Humans are bears. Um, but, but, but back to, like, pandas, I think of, when I think of bears, I really think of, like, the aggressive bears. And I guess maybe that's a fallacy. I don't know. Oh, and you don't see pandas as aggressive. Right. So I think of them as raccoons oh, rather than bears. I think they are aggressive. Raccoons can be kind of <gasps> Oh, my mean. God. Ra- raccoons mm. are yeah, You know what, though? If a, ra- if a raccoon was the size of a panda, it might decide to destroy you. I don't know. It definitely would. Oh, my God. There's so many there's so stories smart. about people adopting bears... baby raccoons, and then they bite their faces off. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, bears like don't birds. usually seek people out, but raccoons are always up in your business. <laughs> because they want your stuff. They always want... I don't want people touching my stuff. <laughs> like a bear. Mm. Raccoons want to touch all the things with yeah. their little grabby hands. You know why? <laughs> Do you know why? Why? Because they have... Really, really sensitive fingers. So basically, they see the world by touching it. Ooh. Oh my god! Right? Mm, so you just gotta, have to, you just have to understand raccoons, man. Yeah. They don't want to touch your stuff. They just want to touch things. They're like yeah. tiny blind people. Yeah. And their like sense of smell and their sight is not that great, but their sense of touch is really, really mm. good. Yeah, but think about like how similar raccoons are, like just physically to panda bears. They both have like like little bandit markings around their cute little eyes. Mm. So you see in color, Josh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> So like if there Aside was like, from so the if color there was like, of their marking. So if there was a cat, 
that had like <laughs> the same markings, you'd be like, that's like a panda. <laughs> Well, this, okay, this, ha- this has actual scientific, uh, you know, like backing to it. You know, the same si- like yeah, they yeah. They have- did like scientists did debate whether it was a raccoon or a. Panda, well, well, yeah, yeah. It's also based on like the, you know the fur because markings the, because and also the, the, their thumbs are similar. Well, I, think, as well. I think a big reason why it was debated was because you also have instances like the red panda, right? Which, which is, is the, more like a raccoon. Yes, it is yeah. the size of a raccoon. It has the banded tail. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. definitely, like, an evolutionary track. Yeah. Well, so, like, basically pandas are the missing link between raccoons and bears. Hmm, maybe. I don't know. I think that's true because you've got pandas and then you've got red pandas and then you've got raccoons. Well, are red pandas and pandas actually related? No. Red pandas are closer to raccoons. Yeah. that See, that makes sense. But they also thought that pandas were close to raccoons. So, like, right. that's how evolution yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. And, and then of. pandas are more towards bear. I feel like yeah. we right. should do more science before we name things. <laughs> But can, can we do more science, though? Can there be such a thing as too much science? <laughs> yeah, well, well, we need to do well, science. I mean, a second, a second <laughs> ago, I was fact-checking, and I got yelled at for fact-checking. <laughs> no, I'm talking about scientists who name things. Ah, they should do more they research. Should, they should do more science. Before, oh, they should yeah. science harder. Before naming a thing, yeah. they should science more. Yeah, they should science more so that so we that can... So that names are more accurate. Yeah, they should science more so we can have better... Instead of Red Panda. We can have yeah. better half-drunk podcasts about their animals. They should science better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, if they had science better, they would know that dinosaurs are birds. <laughs> exactly. Maybe they'd have a different name. We don't know. <laughs> we'll never know because scientists didn't science enough. Mm. Yeah. Well, there you go. we're all standing on the shoulders of giants, ladies. So, you know, we only know what we know because they messed up already. You know? I mean, that's true. Would you have seen dinosaur bones and been like, this is a bird? No. Uh, if I examined the bones and been like, the structure is very similar to the structure of bird bones, yes. Mm-hmm. Which is what they should have done because yeah. the evidence was there. Hmm. I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. I know historically, like, I mean, that's the reason dragons are a thing is because people came across drag, um, uh, dinosaur bones and thought, what is this crazy creature? It must be some fantastical beast. I also you know? um, read an interesting article that talked about, like, dragons are a common fear across many cultures because it incorporates like several of the things that humans are inherently afraid of. Like it's a snake and it's a giant bird and it's a bear. Dragons are birds, guys. Yeah. Dragons are birds. Yeah. But like, it's like it incorporates all those, like all those Whoa. fears into one thing. Wait a minute. Yeah. Dragons are birds. Are you saying that like they all had feathers the whole time? Dragons are just giant. Oh, dragons are dinosaurs. Dragons are birds. <laughs> That's what I was just trying oh to say. Oh my god, you're right. Dragons are just big birds. Oh uh-huh. my god, you're right. Whoa. There you go. You're Whoa, man. so right. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Oh man, are you guys ready to move on to my favorite evolutionary link? Yeah, what's your I like how you're, favorite? What about me, guys? Like, you want to know what I have to say about evolution? Yeah. Me too. I want to. <laughs> Josh, hear what, you have to say. what is your favorite evolutionary? Link. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna be a little bit lame, but a little bit exciting. Does and it have just... to do with the Triforce? No. Well, yes, because it's about humans, okay. and humans invented the Triforce. Because um, it's a link. nerds. It's a link. It's a link. Uh, I see what you did there. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. I see what you did there now. Um, <laughs> so, so, so my favorite evolutionary link is the very simple one between human beings and chimpanzees. Oh. Right, because it's fascinating to me and there's a really great um uh, interview where they asked Neil deGrasse Tyson about it and he talks about how like so human beings are 97 percent genetically similar to chimpanzees right and you think about what that three percent does for us Uh, versus chimpanzees right not much (laughs) (laughs) well some would say not much and some would say so much yeah right um but then he goes on to talk about like what if there is something that is three percent more advanced Oh, than humans. Than humans are. Well, advanced. Anyway, I'm not going to interrupt you. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. Advanced it, it, is a right. Well, interesting. Like further anyway. along. Further along on e- the uh, on the different. Three percent different. Three percent different. Yeah. Right. But like uh, different more towards the 
understanding that we have of yeah, yeah. further furthering science and technology oh, gotcha, and gotcha, gotcha, understanding gotcha. Oh, the universe, cool, 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 if you will. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he talks about how like quantum physics they would understand at age three. Like, and we would sound like blubbering apes to them uh, uh, because they would be, you know, 3% farther along in the evolutionary timeline. Yeah. Right? And um, so when I think about our relationship to chimps and like a lot of the like nasty things we see them do and like nasty things in our history, um, you know, it fascinates me. This totally goes back to my thing about aliens being us from the future, by the way. <laughs> oh, I just want to point sure. that out. Yeah, though. I dig. Yeah, I like, think that's, that's true. totally. And we, we, yeah. it's not space travel, it's time travel. Yes! <gasps> you weren't even there for that conversation, yeah. and you know what's up. I get it. See, I get this it. is le- a I'm legit theory, guys. Yeah. You know, just, just I'm saying. But I'm anyway, totally back it. to chimpanzees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to, but we, please don't, but, yeah. don't feel free. Don't not go on a tangent because I'm talking about chimpanzees. Well, <laughs> you, I, I think it's really interesting because, you know, along with the whole chimpanzees being 3% different, you know, it, it's like horses are like 7% different. Like, Oh, yeah, All, now that's, like, holy crap, yeah, that's a like, huge Yeah, difference. like, we yeah. do not look similar to a horse at all, but the way, it, it's just so fascinating, like, all, like, mammal life is only something, like, up to, like, like 10%, 10 or 12% yeah. different like, it's from not each much. other. It's yeah. not a lot. Mm-hmm. So, like, the the basic building blocks are all And it's the really same. fascinating. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why scientists think that... They wonder about different evolutionary timelines and, like, how much different could other life forms be on other planets? Well, and then there's the thing about... If this is a carbon-based universe. And there's the thing know? about octopi who have uh, certain sections of their DNA are massively different than anything else on Earth. Octopi or aliens? That's what... I mean, that's kind of the, like, jokey thing that they said. Mm. I'm sure but conspiracy like, theorists love yeah, that. Yeah, so that's super fascinating. Mm. Well, I mean, there are a lot of theories out there that could explain things like that. Like, um, uh, and I'm, I always bring up Cosmos when I talk about science, because that's sort of, like, my baseline. Mm. Um, but uh, in the newest version, Tyson talks about um, how, like... It is a possibility that life ha- life has leapfrogged throughout a galaxy. Um, okay, so follow me on this one, guys. I'm gonna try and not screw it up. Okay, um, so because small building blocks of life can exist outside of Earth, right, on comets, asteroids, things like that, we think, we think, we yeah. think it's possible, right? So it is possible that little building blocks of life have piggybacked on things like comets and asteroids. Oh, gotcha. Right, okay. and those comets go all the way out to what is called the Oort cloud outside of our solar system, right? And that cloud, they can then deposit molecules to, and then other pl- other systems can pass through that cloud. So if you look at a whole galaxy, are you with me still? Yeah. If you look at a whole galaxy moving about in an orbit, the Oort clouds will mix. So if life, say, life evolves on Earth, and a comet comes by and picks up some molecules, that can go all the way out to the Oort cloud and then piggyback and leapfrog onto other planets throughout the galaxy, Right. So that is how, like, certain building blocks and molecules could end up influencing octopus DNA, perhaps. Oh, nice, 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 nice. You know like, what I mean? My God. Because <laughs> it could be, it could be like oh, one. man. It could be like one set of alien DNA or like one set of like hmm. otherworldly molecules <sighs> that could influence it. It's that possible. That's so awesome. <laughs> that is the best theory I've ever heard about anything. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. Well, you remember in Rick and Morty when they hit when they're out in space and they hit that space bug, and Morty's like, "Oh, I didn't, oh, know, yeah. I didn't know bugs existed in space." And Rick's like, "Oh, you think Earth de- Earth developed life on its own?" <laughs> you know, and he just moves on with his life, right? That's like a very very new wild scientific theory. Yeah. I love it. Right. I so, love it. do you know about bonobos? What about them? Oh, about bonobos. their crazy no- noses? No, but no, 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 that's baboons. Um, they have incredibly social groups. Um, they got an alpha male and an alpha female. Um, and they don't really... Whoa. They, okay. Yeah. They are super oh. similar to chimpanzees. And But they're, I think they're even more similar to But their body types are us. even closer to... Yeah, humans. and they... Wow. Yeah, yeah. How have I never heard of I thought, bonobos? I thought a bonobo was a type of... Chimpanzee? chimpanzee is that wrong? that could be possible i thought it was yeah. a subspecies that could be possible i thought it was like a bonobo chimp i thought it was a 
Um, pygmy chimpanzees, sometimes they're called. Okay, all right. So there you go. Endangered great ape and one of the two species making up the genus Pan or the common chimpanzee. Okay, so they okay, are the yeah. same. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. They look, they're super similar and they look, I mean, bonobos definitely, when I'm looking at this image and I'll share it with you guys, um, it looks, ve- I mean, bonobos look more human. Than chimpanzees oh, way do. more, yeah. Chimpanzees look like one step closer to gorillas compared to bonobos. Yeah, and bono- save that image to your phone too. And bonobos, their um, uh, their social structure is very much like humans, uh, but they're a lot more peaceable, and they solve most of their problems through sex. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like when they have a war, the way they make up is kind of like a group orgy, and then like. If oh, someone... yeah, they'll send females from one clan to another clan for yeah. sexy times. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, you guys want to be friends? Sweet. Let's let's hook up. They have, like, long-term uh, bisexual and homosexual relationships and, like, with no problems. They have, like, yeah, they're super fascinating. So cool. Anyway. Yeah, they're super great. Like, study up on them. But I was like, dude, we could learn something from that. <laughs> we just got to love everyone, man. Yeah. And then when a new <laughs> person comes into the clan, they, like, go through the group and, like, perform simulated sex acts on, like, everyone in the group. And that's, like, how they're in the group. Whoa. Yeah. So it's, like, hazing. It's, like, a frat hazing. <laughs> I'm like, what? Hmm. Yeah. They're but super like, fascinating. Like, I'm, I'm half, like, I'm half, like, disgusted by that, but I'm a half, like, oh, they're just, it's just a form of love. Yeah. They're just <laughs> hugging. I mean, there's no difference from us, like, shaking hands with everyone. Mm. <laughs> it is kind of similar if you think about it too much. Yeah. Right. Hmm. But, um, so that's talking about your favorite evolutionary language. <laughs> Mm, we have certainly veered off in a magical place, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, this has been quite a journey. Yeah. Um, but some other things I think about with chimps. Um, we, oh, God, I can't believe we ended up talking about, like, Nodegrass Tyson's theory of, like, cloud life in galaxies when we were just talking about chimps. That's whiskey talk, folks. That's, That's what awesome. happened. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> have we drunk enough bourbon that now we don't believe in evolution anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not make this political. America. Now, uh, actually, this is a great transition to I, talk about my podcast. I, yeah. So, what is your podcast? I still don't know. Yeah. So, I, this is a great opportunity to tell you because this actually like evolves. Relevant. Whoa. Very well. Whoa, man. Uh, so it's called uh, Pop Culture Cliff Notes. So, have you ever had a movie where you say, "I've never seen this movie"? And, I just did that, right? And yeah. everyone's like, "Oh my god, how have you never seen this movie? Oh, what's wrong with you?" Which just happened. Yes. Now you never have to worry again because in <laughs> pop culture, I was Cliff so notes, worried. <laughs> <laughs> but now you don't have to be worried. Did she pay you for this PSA? We figured it out. This is so organic. I love this. This is like not planned at all. This is so beautiful. Is this just the planets aligning? Tell me, like, tell me to, about why, okay. how I can. So now worry you don't have to worry anymore. because pop culture cliff notes will, if you listen to the podcast, will tell you everything you need to know about the movie to fake your way pretending you've watched it without having to watch it. You mean it. I don't have to waste hours of my life watching a thing I don't care about, but can still discuss it around the water cooler oh, of my office? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so we discuss... You've heard about her podcast. No, no I haven't. She really I hasn't. Said that. She really, really hasn't. This is amazing. The cup, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to charge you a dollar extra. This is so organic. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, so we cover um, kind of those iconic movies, like uh, we've done Ghostbusters, we've done um, uh, The Godfather, we just did Dirty Dancing, <laughs> uh, we're going to do, I think we're going to do Fight Club, we're going to do, you know, like all, all of those kind of movies. So then if you're ever caught in a party situation, like, you've never seen this, oh, yes, I have, uh, let me fake. So we cover, um, we do a brief synopsis of the movie, we cover... Uh, why everyone says you should watch it. We cover why you probably don't want to watch it. <laughs> um, it really hurts me that Fight Club was on your list. Oh, it's a great movie. Like, there are movies on the list that... Like, we just did Dirty Dancing. I don't want to give anything away, guys. Spoilers for the podcast. Um, but but there definitely are movies that in the podcast were like, you know what, guys? You should just watch this movie. 
Like oh, okay. we were, we like we were wrong. Like this yeah. is a movie that everyone says you should watch. They're right. You should actually take yeah, the time I, and I watch this movie. I feel like that's movie. what's gonna happen when you do this podcast. You're gonna like flip halfway through and be like, guys, just watch these movies. These movies are amazing. And all of these just movies. Watch, no, just no, no, watch no, no, no. Citizen Kane. Well, C- Citizen Kane is on our list. <laughs> but we also come to some really interesting conclusions. Like because there's movies that we haven't seen. Like the very first one we do is Goonies. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, okay. Which I never watched. And for years, oh. I had people be like, why have you never watched this movie? So I so, have that here in this room. So for me, I got to watch it for the first time. And my partner on the show, Cubby Altabelli, fantastic writer, um, he had watched it, but only as a kid. So it was really interesting to have us watch it again. And we take notes and we talk about... Um, yeah, like why it's important, why you don't have to watch it. A brief synopsis. We talk about um, like cocktail chatter, like things you can say at the party that'll make people think you watched it. We cover <laughs> we cover topics to avoid, like to avoid getting in that rabbit hole of someone who's obsessed with the movie. <laughs> I just want to talk your ear off. We tell you like subjects to avoid. We we cover, um, which is a new one we had to event- invent after watching all these movies, um, is this movie racist? So we cover that. Oh man! Yeah, which so after many w- things are racist. I know, and after watching a few of them, we're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta put that subject in, everybody. <laughs> like, this is an important one. Mm. Um, and then we end it with a drinking game. That should you choose to watch the movie, <gasps> here's that's a brilliant. drinking game you can play along with the movie. So that's our podcast, Pop Culture Cliff Notes. It's gonna be coming out probably within the next month or so. I can, you can, you'll find the link on your blog. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, we'll totally plug you. That sounds really funny. Um, And we'll do vice versa too. Right. How long is your podcast? It's about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. I think they average around 50 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Super cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, so I don't know if I have anything more to say about chimpanzees and bonobos um, or, or pandas. <laughs> or, or dinosaurs. Or dinosaurs. Or birds. Um, but evolutionary links. <laughs> yeah. We've uh, covered a lot of good We've covered a lot of good I'm stuff. I'm still not sure how Josh feels about birds, though. Um, uh, let me I feel it, like that was left really uh, unclear. Let me make it clear to you. And unfinished. Very ambiguous. I sounded very upset and vehement. About birds. But like, Sounded past you, tense. Josh, show me on the doll where the bird touched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a story here? Did you have a bad experience? No, I just. Because I just, this is this like, is just very yeah. It's getting I'm, like I'm, real guys. Like I'm ready to run you a shower and just let you <laughs> hug yourself in there for a couple hours. <laughs> and the birds. And just the birds. There's so many parts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. I can't point to any specific memory. Did it you watch really funny. like the birds? I did like watch Hitchcock's the birds. The birds. I did watch Hitchcock's The Birds. How old were you when you watched that? That's a good question. Uh, um, but favorite. honestly, like I will tell you, like the few experiences I've had with birds, like honestly, it's very much like a deep seated, like you look into a bird's eye. It's true. It's like it, like the like it's very true. Like you look, look like an owl or look a hawk into a bird's eye. Yeah, even a pigeon. Yeah, and just see that it wants to eat your liver and it like it triggers it triggers your lizard brain and like the hair on the back of your neck stands up and like yeah, yeah for sure i like birds just think about that next time I, you look I at I really one. enjoy watching... Okay, as, as, a, as, a, as bird, a person ever? who watches a lot of bird attack videos, I still really like <laughs> birds. Like, no, I, I met, like, the See, sweetest... That's what, that's what... You want to just be a bird trainer. You want to be Chris Pratt I and just use birds to your ends. I met the sweetest birds. You want to conquer the world by making Actually, the birds Actually, I, I could totally see you, like, training a hawk. Like, that's... You could totally, for sure, do I would that. breathe some fire and then be like, ca And, like, my bird just, <gasps> oh my like, God, comes Oh, my God, oh, my God. You would literally be a dragon. I already am. Bitch. Because you'd have like <laughs> no, because you'd have like the bird, and then you would be breathing fire, and dragons are just birds. Yeah. Oh my oh god. Dragons are just fire birds. Man. Oh my god. Uh, that sounds like the right time to sign off. Perhaps <laughs> dragons are just phoenix bird dragon fragons. Fire breathing dragon bird phoenixes. Well, thank you all That's for listening. What's happening? This has been this Whiskey is Talk. Happening, yes, guys. it has. It's happening right um, now. And if you like Whiskey Talk, remember you can always uh, buy us a drink on our Patreon and check out our website, www.whiskey-talk.com. Uh, where we'll share all of the goofy stuff we talked about on the podcast. Um, you can also check out Pop Culture... Pop Culture Cliff Notes. Yeah. Pop and you can email all your hate mail to pccnpodcast at gmail.com. Mm, awesome. <laughs> Was that the actual email? Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Oh. Normally, I give I give out somebody else's email ah! for complaints. <laughs> no, we bold of Cubby, you. Cubby and I have a little contest running to see who's going to get the most hate mail. Oh, oh. yeah, solid, solid. I, I think um, Christine's going to get creepy mail, and I'm going to get hate mail. Ah! I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for listening, guys. This has been Whiskey Talk. I'm Josh. I'm Christine. Oh, and I'm Shoshana. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us, Thank and you. have a good night, guys. Hey, baby, let me give you the strong wiggly finger. Oh, thank you.